John Huss, the Bohemian reformer, was burned at the stake in 1415. His accusers lit the fire around his body, but before they did so, they placed on his head a crown of paper with the images of devils that had been painted on it. He answered the mockery of, of those people that were about ready to burn him and, and putting this on his head saying, My Lord Jesus Christ for my sake wore a crown of thorns. Why should I not then for his sake wear this light crown, even if it be so, uh, so ignominious? Truly I will do it willingly. The wood was stacked up to Huss's neck before it was set on fire. <laughs> The Duke of Bavaria asked him to renounce his preaching, but as he trusted in God's word, Huss replied, In the truth of the gospel which I preach, I die willingly and joyfully today. The wood was set on fire, and as the flames licked on his body, Huss died while singing the refrain, Jesus Christ the Son of the living God, have mercy on me. Singing as his body was being burnt, as he was being burnt alive, as he was being consumed by pain, he was singing a song of praise to God. That's amazing. But as amazing as it is, it's not a singular incident. In fact, through the, the accounts of the martyrs dying, we see over and over again the same thing happening. Martyrs singing praises to God in the midst of their death rows. And they're going terrible torture, singing praises to God. We see the biblical example also, not in this case of an execution, but Paul and Silas having been beaten and their feet uh, fastened in stalks in the inner prison at midnight where their backs bloodied, they're singing praises and praying to God. I want to ask you, in this season of Thanksgiving, how can people be thankful in the midst of harsh conditions? How can people be thankful when the worst things in life are happening to them? How can they joyfully sing? Our text this morning is Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, where we find these words. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and, and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Our passage this morning reminds us that Christ pours out his blessings on us. The rich blessing that's mentioned here in this text is, is listed as being of Christ. Christ is the author of the blessing that's mentioned here in this passage. But it's not just this blessing that is mentioned here. We understand that Christ is the author of every blessing. That it is God that we look to as the, the source of everything which is good, which is, comes into our life. All blessings that touch our lives are through him. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Every spiritual blessing Jesus Christ has blessed us with. James chapter 1 verse 17 adds to that every spiritual blessing with these words, every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. Every good thing which touches our life, every gift which touches our life, has its source in Him. There's not one good thing which happens to us in our existence that our Lord has not offered, that He has not given to us. And that reminds us of this fact, even in the worst of times, even when we're experiencing the, the harshest things that can happen to us, still we are being richly blessed by God. No matter how dark it seems, no matter how painful our present trial, even when grief threatens to overwhelm us, His blessings continue. 
They continue to shower into our lives. His blessings are more significant than the awful things that we experience in this world. The pain that we endure for this little while is temporary after all, but the blessings of God are exactly what we need when we need them. The blessings are for our need and for our good, and therefore they are more impressive than the harshest things which happen to us. And in fact, the scriptures assure us that he's at work even in the worst things which occur in our lives. Even in the awful things that we would not face. God can work in those very things for our good when we trust him. God can work in the worst circumstances that men make happen to us. Or circumstance brings against us. And bring about a blessing in those very things. God's blessings are not restricted by our suffering. God's blessings are not subservient to the pain of this present world. God's blessings are not hindered by anything that anyone or anything can do against us. And those who belong to Christ must not become blind to the fact that he pours out his blessings on us. Because if we do become blind to his blessings raining down upon us, that has dire consequences on our spiritual condition. If we become blind to the fact that God is blessing us in our lives, then we lose perspective. We no longer see things as we should see them. If we are blind to God's blessing in our lives, then we lose direction. We no longer know the way in which we should set our feet and the direction we should go day by day. But worst of all, when we lose sight of the fact that God is pouring his blessings out upon us, we lose hope. How many times I've seen Christians who become bitter and discouraged and turn away from God because in their hour of need, in their hour of pain, they turned their back on Him thinking that He had abandoned them and they did not see the blessings that God had in mind for them even in that time. Christ pours out His blessings on us. And our passage tells us this morning that the Word of Christ is part of those blessings. <laughs> The specific blessing that, in fact, is mentioned in our text this morning is the Word of Christ. The Word of Christ comes to us as a blessing. The Word of Christ, of course, has to do with all of Jesus' teachings, but it also has to do with all the revelation that comes from God. Everything that God wants us to know can be included in that Word of Christ. And what we call the Word of God, the Bible, is included in that Word. The Scriptures are part of God's revelation for us, and our passage is telling us that this is a blessing to us. This is not like that required reading in the class that you don't really want to attend, and the books that you don't really want to read, and you're only forced to because it's part of the assignment. A lot of people think of scriptures that way, I'm sure. A lot of people see the scriptures and reading them as some sort of painful by that they do punishment that comes on a regular basis. The admonishment we receive is based on the blessing of God's word. And we urge one another on in the faith with that interaction. As we come together on a Sunday morning, as we come together in the Lord's name, as we gather together and become the church, we become steel, sharpening steel. We become those people who are perfecting one another for every good work. And that's what God intends this church to be. A place where we are strengthened to be about our lives for the Lord. One other thing I want you to see here in this passage, and that is the thanks to God is an expression of our songs. Do you notice the, mu uh, the musical nature of this passage? This passage is talking so much about singing here. There's a value in singing as a gathered church. That's not just entertainment value. That's not just something we do to fill the time when we come together on a Sunday morning. That's not just the necessary part where everybody stands and, and mumbles the same words together and then sits down when they're done with it. This is an essential that should silence our an illegal home church as it was then in the Soviet Union. A home church which met in the house of Alexander Grushkin in Barchnall, Siberia. All at once five 
swearing, half-intoxicated officers under the old KGB broke into the meeting and ordered them to disperse. But instead of dispersing, instinctively the people huddled together. They huddled around their pastor as if to protect him from these outside forces that wanted to destroy their fellowship. They formed a human barrier there. And angry and frustrated, some of the officers began peeling people off of that barrier and hauling them out to the car to be transported into prison. At that moment, the pastor shouted out, Wait! If you're going to take some of us, you must take us all. We're one family. What happens to one happens to all of us. Of course, the police vehicle was too small to transport 150 people. And so they fit as many people into the vehicle as they could, and the rest of the congregation trudged behind them in the snow on their way to prison until another vehicle, another few vehicles, could come and pick up the remainder of them. Now they've trudged through the snow. They've been abused in this, in this arrest. They're being persecuted for the sake of Christ. And yet, at the regional executive committee building, all 150 members of that church began singing praises to the Lord. The solidarity of those believers was so unnerving to those people who were in charge of them that they released them a short time later. They couldn't fathom how people this abused, this much under the thumb of the law, these people in prison who had only imprisonment in Siberia before them would be able to sing in that circumstance. The soul is often best expressed in song. There's something about music which touches us deep inside, something about music which goes down to the core of our being. And therefore it becomes the expression of thanks that we have within. We should express it in song. This morning I want to acknowledge to you that I grew up in a musical family. Oftentimes late at night I'd fall asleep with my mom practicing the piano downstairs. We were up in our little attic room and the sounds of the piano would filter up through the floor. My mom practiced late at night because she had eight kids. There wasn't much time during the day for her to do any practicing. But I always loved falling asleep to the piano playing, the arpeggio runs, the songs that she knew, played over and over again. I knew them all by heart. But what a joy to listen to the musical strains coming up as we fall asleep. Oftentimes as a family, we gather around the piano and my mom would teach us the different parts to sing to one hymn or another. We singing was a part of our lives at home. In fact, it became a, so much a part of us that really we never learned how to keep from singing. Even today when I get together with my sisters, you know, as we get up in the morning and go to fix breakfast, as we're uh, standing around doing our little tasks there, I'll break into song and then one of my sisters will start harmonizing, then another one of my sisters will pick it up and pretty soon we're singing, what a wonderful day to start, a way to start the day. Singing together, it's a, it's a joy. And today, oftentimes, when I'm with my family, if something's said in conversation that reminds me of a line in a song, I'll just burst into that song. They'll do it too. They understand me. I do it also when I'm with other people. They don't understand as much. Linda gets it from time to time. And uh, my daughter, she understands it. She does that same thing herself. But uh, not too many people just spontaneously start singing that way. Perhaps it's easier for me, having grown up among music, to be able to express Thanksgiving in song. Perhaps it doesn't come as naturally for you to be able to express your hearts in song. But I want to say to you this morning, even if you have to force it out a bit the first few times, start expressing your thankful heart to God in song. Do it as we gather together in worship, as we come together as God's people. Do it in those quiet moments in your home. You know, your devotions don't have to be quiet. You can sing from time to time as you express your heart to the Lord as well. Let singing flow from your heart. Let it speak of your thanks to Him. That really brings us to our invitation time this morning. This morning, if you'd like to make your life a song of thanksgiving to Him, 
If you'd like to place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for the first time, or you'd like to renew your commitment to Him, we want you to have an opportunity. We invite you to come forward as we stand and as we sing our invitation song, Surrender. Let's get it.